What's going on, man? It's your big brother, K Reno, and y'all are tuned in to another episode of K Reno Radio YouTube version. I got a special guest with me tonight, man. This brother is on the rise, up and coming brother in the music field. I got a chance to listen to some of his music, man. And when I tell you that he is more than ready, he is more than ready, man. And I believe personally that he's going to be one of the next ones that y'all see making that ascension in the music business. My brother, Sebastian from Dope Brokers Entertainment, man. What's going on, family? How you feeling? Man, what's going on? It's, it's great to be here, Reno, man. I appreciate uh, the look and everything. I appreciate the introduction, man. Feels great, man. And by the way, uh, I heard that it was your birthday today, so just, just <laughs> Oh, uh, man, I thank you, man. It's all love. It's, it's all about you right now, though, brother. We're so glad to have you on. As I was saying, I um I got a chance to listen to some of your music, man. Mo Hustle put me up on it, and he was, like, really, really um, proud to play your music and show me a lot of your videos. And one of, one of the things that I got out of listening to your songs, other than how good the songs were, was the work ethic all the videos that you've been doing because he told me that you what you how old are you 21 yeah i just, I just turned 22 yeah 22. Man, blessing, man so so to be that young brother what instilled in you earlier what was instilled in you earlier to give you that drive to want to do music who were some of the people that influenced you and what made you fall in love with music in the first place man you know my uh my pop has always um put me on to music and and things like that and just seeing him work in his regular you know life that kind of gave me that work ethic and, and the value of what hard work can do for you and and you know he he's he was very talented and he kind of inspired me to go you know down the musical route or something that he wanted to do and i just uh we had that music in our blood um and as far as like actual you know artists and things like that you know i loved um i always loved like my, you know, the more artistic, just very uh, people that are very involved with their music, like Michael Jackson, and uh, you know, as far as hip hop goes, J Cole, and, and people that really were involved in the production of their music, and, and it was more of like uh, it gave you a feeling rather than just just sounded good to listen to and stuff like that. So I'm very involved in how my music comes out and sounds, you know, and. Um, as far as the work ethic goes, man, I, I actually, I don't know if Mo told you this, but I produce on my own beats. So everything that you hear, I, I, it's 100% me from the writing to the recording to the production of the, of the beat and everything. And it's just, you know, we I started doing that because I wanted to, you know, I always write, I, I always write and I wanted to, you know, start recording and doing music, but the beats was too expensive. So I said, you know what? I'm about to make them myself. I'm gonna learn how to do this and make them myself. And that's what I did, and I and I got good at it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, as far as like people like Kanye West, and, and, and if you, I feel like once you, if you could do the whole thing, then you become more uh, powerful. Absolutely. You know that. You know that's 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 a lot of people's story. Because I was the same way. I was like, man, I can't afford these tracks. I started doing my own beat. Man. <laughs> so that's amazing how that that cycle just comes around like that, man. But I didn't know that you was doing your own production because I actually asked Mo. I was like, man, who's doing his beats? And he was like, I don't know, but you know, but just to hear that, that shows me that the um the production talent is right on par with the lyric, the lyricism and the vocal ability. And you are um, I can't think of nobody that you remind me of. And that's yeah. a good thing, you know, and 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 um you have the mixture between the singing and, and the rapping and and the um the, the the Latino influence heavily in your music, man. And and I think that. Just me as, you know, I'm an old school guy and I was rocking out to it, like just very, very original, man. So what are, what are, what are the plans as far as you moving forward in terms of how you're going to promote your project and how you're going to get your name out there? Because I know it's a lot of people that need to know who you are. Yeah. Um, I, first of all, I appreciate you, you know, um, I appreciate you saying that you rock with my music and everything like that. And, and it's true, there's, you know, there's a lot of Latino influence I do do the hip hop and the R&B and everything. At the end of the day, I just make music that I like. And, you know, I hope, I'm hoping that other people like it. And as far as what we're planning to like do for pushing and the rollouts and things like that, just getting out there in front of people, man, this COVID shut down a lot of stuff, but hopefully we can get back on, on tour dates and um, keep pushing bigger and better. You know, we, I always try to pull out, put, put out quality work 
I like my videos to be on point. I like um, the sound to be on point and just and just stuff that nobody's ever seen or heard before. Like I want to do my own style. So hopefully, you know, that's the plan. Just keep keep doing with the algorithm that we got going of, of being different and sounding different and getting the marketing right, you know, and getting the shows right and keeping that image, man. I got that little Spanish looking image. So <laughs> we'll that. Hopefully, hopefully it catches on, catches some fire. No, you you definitely um, got a, in my opinion, you got a universal sound. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, that's why I asked, how are you going to get it out? Because I think that a lot of times you have great artists who their music is fantastic, but they don't end up having the reach. And then a lot of good music gets, gets lost because the people don't even know about it. But I'm pulling for you to make sure that you just get the get the, the, the promotion and the, and the marketing in so that because you got you got songs, the few songs that I heard, you got them them one them one them one listens. Like I ain't gotta hear but one time to know, okay, that that that's a hit. Okay, that's a hit. That could definitely be a hit, you know, and, and everybody doesn't master or be able, not able to capture that formula, man. So I think you just gotta just gotta keep on going. Now you you said something earlier about when you're talking about doing your own production and all these different things you touched on and having that power in terms of like I ain't gotta wait on nobody. If I hear it in my mind, I can get up at three in the morning and make it happen. What about the um talk to us and the, the younger artists about the business side and maintaining and establishing that same kind of power? Because the reason I ask that is so many artists get stripped and get just just robbed of their revenue in this game what's the strategy what's the plan to make sure that everything that you do will be coming to you yeah so you know thankfully i'm i'm um my my, my father is my manager and mo hustle is uh also helping out with that and those are two people that i trust and that i know have my best interests and don't want nothing but success for me you know, and and they know that I'm I'm also the type of person I'm not gonna switch up on certain people that that help me and they'll always receive, you know, always receive it back. So it's kind of like a trust and love thing. But it's I think having as far as the business side goes, because you can't do everything by yourself as far as business goes, it's it's gonna be too much, too difficult. And there's things that you need people to negotiate for you, just a sense of professionalism. But it's about having the right people around you. Um, and that's the most important thing. And it's hard. It's hard. But also being smart enough to know, you know, what you're worth and what you deserve and who's who's doing what. And, and, and don't get too excited on on numbers and what people say, because that's a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, hearsay and that's a lot of people blowing smoke. And, and that's how you get got. But luckily, like I said, I have uh, my father. He's, you know, no better person than, than my dad to be looking out for me like that. And then Mo Hustle is a good, um, a good partner as well. So I'm, I'm blessed, but you know, like I said, just be always be aware of what people are saying and, and, and don't ever uh, do nothing unless it's concrete, you know, and if you know, it's going to be a good, a good opportunity. Um, and it, you know, it sometimes you might get got and sometimes you might get somebody. So it's, it's just a, a give and take thing, but always, I, I say, you know, we've been blessed to have so many looks and so many, you know, good things come our way, but it's all because of honesty and just being a good, you know what I'm saying, a good person in this game because there's so many bad people trying to get you, but it's one person that's looking out for who's, who, who deserves and who the, who the good people are, and that's God, and that's all I can say. We've been blessed in that sense. You hit the nail on the head, brother, when you said God. Um, it's funny, man. We got a lot in common because when I started, I was around 15, 16 years old and, and my dad was backing me the same way financially and business wise and all that. So it does give you a sense of um, security. You, 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 you're insulated within that, that circle, that realm of like, I know that I got one that ain't going to let nobody stun on me. You know, so that that's that's a beautiful thing. We're here with my young brother Sebastian. Let me ask you because you you're a young brother, so I'm from the old school. So I've come through the transition of just how it used to be into now. How have you been able to use the digital aspect of of things to make sure to to push your music? How has the digital world benefited you as, as an artist? Because this is something we didn't have. 25, 30 years ago. And, and you guys, y'all utilize it so well. 
I, I think the digital aspect and you know the media, the social media aspect of, of the music industry is like so it's so easy now, like to to be heard, to be seen, to be liked, and, and you can reach so many different pockets, you know, like before, because mind you, I'm also running with a couple old heads too. Mo's an old head, my right. pop old head. So they sometimes they'll be like, man, we gotta do it the old school way. Go to the phone and put bop, bop, trunk. It's like, yeah, that's They're right. They're yeah. right. <laughs> no, that that also reaches a lot of a lot of people, but it's funny because you know that reaches the old the older crowd. Like they still want to see that, and the younger people, you know, they don't even know about that. You know what I'm saying? But even if they do pass by, it's cool. It's like, oh, this is retro. This is old school. Like they <laughs> hustle, you know. But the digital age is so powerful because you can reach, you know, you can reach across the world, across the globe and people that you never even knew might like your stuff. You know what I mean? Or they might be, it's, it's just, it's more of a chain effect. It's like a spider web and you can, you can touch so, you can touch so far without even that being your goal. You know, you might just want to be local, but somebody, you know, you might want to reach a small group in, in, in Texas and then somebody from California, somebody from, from Idaho might see you and then now all of a sudden you got that and it's like that wasn't even your goal but it's like a, it's like a just a, a web you know a chain and this is super powerful I think it needs to be utilized um you know by a lot of people but it is difficult it's difficult to navigate you seem like a um a, a well a well-rounded grounded humble young brother and that that's to me that's one of the qualities that a lot of artists don't really display you know, especially as they, they they as they start to grow, talk about um, the appreciation that an artist should have for their fan base, and how you will be able to remain humble and have that same humility once you hit that that big level, which I believe you're gonna hit. How how will you be able to maintain that humility and still be a stern, solid businessman at the same time? You know, I think it's is what your motivation is, you know, it's what your goal is. So me, I, I, I've been blessed to have good role models around me and, and, and teach me like, you know, when you get to a certain point, it's, it's, not for, it's not for you, it's for the people around you, you know, because I've been, I've been through certain uh, trials and tribulations in my life and my family or people around me or friends, you know, they've helped me get to a position of comfortability or get to get out of that that uh, wrong you know that position that I was in that was hindering me or struggling through and that's something that I take with the fan base as well because without your fan base you would be nothing you would not be making any money you would not be doing shows you would not be living your dream you wouldn't be able to provide for you and your family off of your craft if you didn't have that fan base so at the end of the day they're your family and you have to respect and love them. You got to give them what they want. And they want good music. They want a good, you know, role model to look up to. They want somebody that's going to help them through, you know, through your music and through the things that you put out. And um, I could never take for granted somebody that's helped me. And at the end of the day, your fan base, that's what they are. They're, they're your help. They're your fuel. They're your money. They're your gas. So you can't take that. You can't take advantage of that. And you can't take that for granted. And it's the same thing, like I said, it plays with your family. So. Once I think once I get to that level, I'm always going to keep, you know, my people that have held me down around me. And my goal is not to make money, be rich and famous. It's like I want to make money and help my people off of what I do best and what I love to do. And that's a blessing. So my goal is not for money for me. It's for money to help the people that helped me when I was down. And that's always what it will be. And I think that's important. And, and it might be, you know, you might lose sight of it along the way, but I always bring people around you that'll remind you, you know, and I'll tell you what, my mom and my papa would never let me forget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a beautiful thing is to, to not have, to not, a lot of artists, they surround themselves with, uh, with yes men and they have a situation where people start to enable them even when they see them doing wrong or going off the path because once money starts coming in, then the people who are benefiting from the money that the artists are generating from them, they they don't want to mess their money up and right. a lot of artists get lost because it's like nobody wants to to reel them in but the good again you got family you talked about the fans and how important that is man do you look at that as as a as a relationship artists and fans y'all have a relationship 
almost like a partnership because um, you presented your talent to them, but then now there's something they expect from you. Do you view that as a relationship with that you have with the fans that, that needs to be sustained? I, I do. And, and so here's the thing, right? So it's like, I'm such a young, like a, a, a new artist, like my fan base isn't too big, but I do have those people that been there since day one and want to come to every show and hit me up on every song that I drop and are very, you know, loyal and very appreciative. And it's like, it feels good. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody that you've never met kind of makes you think like, how have I, you know, touch them, how have I done just from the things that I'm, you know, writing and recording. And it's like, when you think about it too, you know, you think of yourself, because at the end of the day, I'm a fan, you know, I'm a fan. I, there's artists that I like, right. that I would be like, wow, I can't wait to meet him. Or like, I, I would love to, you know, just chop his brain for a little bit. And it's like, you got to think of it. And it's like, yeah, that might never happen. You know, and you, 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 you realize that they're, a, they're another person somewhere else. And it's, I think when you're an artist and, and you start to come into that realm from going from a fan to an artist, you understand that there is a relationship, but there's also a, like, it's a, it's a boundary to that relationship. So it's like, it's good to listen to them from that, that, that third wall, listen to them. It's like, okay, they want something like this. They need something like this is what they like and feed, feed the soul in that sense. Yeah. But as far as like, you know, maybe, you can tap in every now and then. It's it's an artist uh, fan relationship. That's that's exactly the best way to put it. And they and over time, you you you'll figure you'll find out that your fans will start to understand you. They'll understand how you think. They'll understand your creative process, and they will be able to provide you with um, suggestions and things that because y'all's minds will kind of align. And I'm speaking about what will become your what we call your core audience, because you have you have fans who like your music, who, who people who are gonna listen to it because you made that that one hot song, but you have your core audience, they was rocking with you from day one, and they don't just like the singles that are on the radio, they like that fifth, six, seven, eight track that nobody really pays attention. They gonna be at every show. So that's that's what those are the ones who gonna really uh stick with you like that. Who are some of your favorites? You was talking about some of your favorite artists. Who are some of the, the artists that you that that really had an influence on shaping you and, and making you want to do what you do? Man, so like I said, I I'm I make music that I like in, in my, you know, I, my my uh my catalog is all over the place. I got some Spanish, I got some R&B, I got some hip hop, some rap. Yeah. But I and I, um, I've always loved, like I said, you know, the older cats like Michael Jackson and uh, even the older stuff. Like I love Marvin Gaye. You know, I like I like a lot of that soulful stuff, and I put that in there. But it's you know, I even like to the Spanish guys, like the new guys, Mike Towers. I don't know, I'm throw some names. Mike Towers, Mark Anthony. You know, just just stuff like that. Drake. Uh, J. Cole, as far as rap goes, I love Kanye West, man. Um, you know, just 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 all kind of people. A lot of Houston guys too. I like uh, Devin the Dude. Oh. I like you know uh, Zero, Big Mo. It's it's kind of you can hear all of these influences in my music because I got the Southern, you know, soulful melodic stuff, and and I got the Spanish in there too. And I try to mix what I am. You know, I'm a Mexican American from Houston, Texas. So I'm a lot of different things from the South. I'm Hispanic, you know, so I'm just, like I said, I'm in music that I like, and it's my identity. You know, I like hip hop and I like Spanish music. So, you know, if I could do them both or whatever I could do, that's that's what I'm gonna do. And that's always what it's been, but I love, there's so many people to name, man, but it's, you know, that's, that's those are just a few. So fashion is in the building. You know, you just said something, baby, wanna ask you another question because at the age that you are, 22 years old, what I see a lot, I see a lot of young upcoming artists doing everything in their power to try to emulate artists who are already popping. They, they trying to duplicate a formula that somebody else is already doing. And you just spoke the total opposite of that. So how are you able to listen to these artists and, and, and love these artists, but not 
try to be just like them to have your own identity like you say how we what how did that be rooted in you at this early age because i don't see that a lot with a lot of young artists to be honest with you man thank you i appreciate that man so when i started like i wanted to rap you know i never wanted to sing and i wanted to rap and my favorite artist at the time was j cole well still he's one of my favorite rappers and i always like to do that kind of style and i remember thinking like you know, I would hear a song by him. I was like, man, I want to do something like that. So I would go home, make the beat, cut it up, write my verses. And I'd be like, it's cool, but it ain't as good as that. Yeah. You know, and then I was, I would think about it. I'm like, man, I can't do him better than he does him. Oh, that's right. But I could do me better than, I could do me better than anybody else could do me. And then I started to, you know, divulge a little bit into what it was that I wanted to do and you know, like I said, making the beats helps a lot, too, because you make beats that you like, and you're like, okay, I can do something like this on there. It's not necessarily what they're doing, but they may inspire you and take that inspiration. Like, when I listen, like, for instance, if we if we go to, a, you know, like the Faux Vaux song, you know, I love Houston rap. I love Chopping Screws. I love the, the Houston culture and the, and the swingers and, you know, the slabs and everything. I say, you know what, I'm going to do a swinger song, but how I want to do it. I'm going to sing on it. I'm going to sing on it. I'm going to vibe on it. I'm, I'm going to do it the new school style. I'm not going to play it the old school way, you know, and it touched, it touched a younger crowd. And that's what it's, it's, it's because it's fresh, you know, but it's like, I, like I said before, I can't do nobody else better than they can. So I'm going to do me the best that I can do. And nobody's going to be able to touch that. And, and it's all comes down to the same thing. Like I say, just making music that I like. You know, and it, and it coming out how I, how I do it. Because when I do Spanish, it's not the typical Spanish way because I sing it like melodically. They're very rapping. And people, all the Spanish people that like my Spanish are always telling me like, this don't sound like no regular Spanish stuff. It's different because you're doing like an R&B, but on a Spanish beat, but in Spanish. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I like R&B. So I'm just doing it in Spanish. And, and that's that's how it comes out. So I, it's, just, it's just me liking what I like. And, and, and when you're getting, you know, once you practice being yourself, it's, it's the easiest thing to do. It's natural. You comfortable in your own skin. And see, you're old soul. See, you know, you talk about Michael and Marvin. You know, I, I really believe that a lot of younger artists should study the older music from the past, you know, just to study it, just to learn and also study the, the, the path that the artists themselves had, the road they had to walk down outside of the music because a lot of our struggles would be similar and a lot of mistakes that they made you can avoid just by knowing their story it's a, right. that's deep I, I don't want to get caught up in that let me make sure i don't go in that direction um tell us something that that you believe you'll be able to do um and the reason why i'm asking this next question is because i see a lot of young artists come come out and they got that fire and that desire early on but as the industry starts to wear on them and the, the, the pressures of the industry start to wear on them, they lose that passion, they lose that drive. How are you gonna be able to navigate through all of the, the BS that's gonna come, but still keep your creative drive to keep giving your fans that music? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um... I think, like I said before, I'm blessed to have good good role models and people looking out for me, you know, when I can't. And granted, they're older, so I think a lot of young people neglect the knowledge of, of the people before them. Like you said, studying the Marvins and studying, you know, all the all the old guys that came before you, like they they created it. You know, they started it and, and they went through the tough parts of it. So refined now you know the game is so refined it's so easy but there's still a lot of people there's but there's new ways to 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 get you know to get lost or to get got and and that's hard you know and but i think the knowledge and, and the guidance of people that have been there and you know people that know what they're talking about that's very very important to navigate through through, through a, a new world because at the end of the day all the young guys is new to us right. you know it's new to us going through it. So it, it, it's new to us, but it ain't new to them. There's new things, you know, there might be new little tricks and new little aspects of it, but it, it's essentially the same thing. It's a cake, but it got different frosting on it. That's all it is. So you might not see what's under it, but once you get under it, you know what it's going to taste like. 
So that's that's super important to 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 be able to to take that information and take that guidance. You know, especially um, being young and not I, I've never had anybody before me that made it to that level. So there's no blueprint for me to follow. You know, and you can only go you can only go and do what you think is right, and and take the guidance of people that have been there. And you know when people are like trying to play you and people you know you feel when it's not genuine right. so it's all about you know feeling it out I, I honestly don't know how i'm gonna navigate i'm hoping everything is gonna be okay you know and i'm gonna do it in my best interest and listen to the advice that i'm giving yeah. and um, keep keep good people around me um and that's that's all i can say but yeah a lot of people do get get uh you know get lost in this new age it's, it's new to everybody but it's essentially the same thing so my my only advice would be to just ex, expect it to come. Just expect it to come, so that way, nothing will surprise you. You know, and then you'll be like, okay, just expect it to come, but still be yourself. Because at the end of the day, man, it's about having fun. And most artists, and I'm sure you fall in the same category. If there was no such thing as being able to make a living from doing music, you still do it. You know, you still do it because you love to do it. So that that would be the thing. I notice you make a lot of um, you make a lot of videos. You do a lot of videos, and 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 your videos are very very high quality. You ain't putting out no no crazy looking low budget looking stuff, man. You know, you you all you all in Puerto Rico doing videos and doing going <laughs> different places doing your thing. Um, talk about the importance of visuals, just consistent visuals for an artist, particularly a, a new artist, and then how that's helped you? Um, so just in general, I never like to put out something that's not quality. So, you know, musicians, we make music damn near every day, you know, and, and there's so many songs that we could just be throwing at the wall and seeing what sticks, but I think that brings you into a lower caliber as far as like being an artist and where you want to go. And I never wanted to be that. And as far, and when I, when I, when I decided on my first visual, I was, you know, it was, it was uh, the Fovo song. And I was like, we got to do this one. And we got to do this one right. So we scratched everything that wasn't good. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to be your debut. Like it's your first impression. And people, I wanted it to be the, the best of me. Like I wanted people to be like, wow, this, he looks like, you know, he already at the top. And, and we sought out to have, you know, a good videographer, somebody who, who was good with the creative vision and I had a hand in everything. And I think just having a good visual is something that it, it gives you the vision. It gives you the, the thing to think about while you're listening to the song. It's, it's the movie to the, the soundtrack. It's like, you can't have one without the other. And, it's, it's the first impression because whenever you 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 hear a song that you like you may you know you might go to apple music you might go to spotify but the number one place that everybody always goes to is youtube and if you got a, a beautiful song but with a booty video it's like um you know it kind of is going to dampen what you think about the song like the song can be hard but the, it, it, when, when if that really that video elevates the music yeah. and that's that's the that's the that's the explanation of it if the video is hard, the song is even harder. I think it's like it's like if it's like somebody writing a great book, and then you love that book, and then they come out with a movie version. It's like uh, you know, it, yeah. it, it 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 take it's a disappointment. Yeah, so I, I totally understand what you're saying. Do you come up with the the treatments and the, and the, the concepts for all your videos, or do you collaborate? And you know, you just say, hey, "This is what I want to do." Y'all bring my idea to life. Uh. With different videographers, you know, it depends, but most of the time it's, it's, it's a collaboration, yeah. um, you know, and if, if they suggest something that I'm not too fond of, you know, I'll say, I'll, I'll go back and I'll be like, well, this is what we wanted to do. This is what I was looking at when I, you know, because, you know, when you're writing a song, you already know what, what you want it to look like in your head. So, and you're sitting on it for however long, because you got to go through the mixing process, the mastering process, you know, doing the video, the, doing the treatment, and, you know, filming the video, doing the release, all of that. So you're sitting on it for a minute and you know what you want it to look like because 
the more you listen to it, I mean, you listen to that song so many times before everybody else does. So you already know what you want it to be. And, you know, for me, it's like, there's, there's a lot of talented, you know, videographers out here and, and they, they got passion and they got drive. And those are the ones that I like to work with that have that vision and, and they can help me, you know, cause I might have an idea and they might take that idea and turn it up to 10 and I'm be like, that's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's hard. Let's do that. So that's important to me too. I'm, I, you know, I always have an idea of what I want it to be, but collaboration is the best because two heads are better than one at the end of the day. So it's important to uh, be open to suggestions. Ultimately, you're going to have the last word. Uh, but I, let me ask you this. Put this on your mind. So have you ever been in a situation where you were so, you were just set? I, this is how I want it. We ain't changing, we ain't changing. But the people around you, your brain trust the the um, the majority are saying, "Well, no, it sounds better this way or that way," and you had to say, "Okay, you know what? I got to go with the majority because those numbers don't particular don't don't typically lie." Right. Could you do you have do you have it in you to say, "All right, you know what? You always right about that. I still don't agree, but the numbers we gonna go with 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 the vote." Yeah. So if it's yeah, the answer, the answer to that is yes. I've changed certain things before because of, you know, the input of the majority and, and what would be better for, you know, the more commercial or whatever the case, and what more and more people are like, yes, the answer to that is yes, I've done it before. I'm not opposed to that idea. I will fight a little bit for it. <laughs> yeah, no you know, listen, listen to it. Like, listen to it. This, go listen to it in the car. Or like, you know, go look at it. You know, but if I believe in it, I believe in it and I'm like, no, yeah. this is what it needs to be. This is this is how I want it. This is how it's gonna be. Then it's like you can't tell me nothing. Cause I when I know, I know. But if if yeah. if a lot of people are saying something like and they're like, mm, I don't know, I'll be like, okay, let me go maybe, you know, take a revision or or, or let me think about it a little bit. And and ultimately I'll end up changing it, you know, because that's what it is. But if I'm like, nah, this is you know, if I'm in love with it, then we get married, right? It's definitely a balance because when, when you know, you really know, and nobody can tell you no different. But it, it is a balance. It's a thin line because sometimes you got to like, you know, because if the people around you uh, are looking out and they believe and have your best interest at heart, they're not going to tell you nothing that, you know. That's I mean, sometimes I think about it, I'm like, I'm like, I, 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 I get cocky for like a second and I'm like, well, this is what I want to do, and they like what I do, so maybe I'm gonna keep it like this, you know. But it's that's just if you're in love with it, like you try to convince yourself why you want to keep it rather than, you know, go with that. But sometimes you just like you said, like it just you you know you know like this is what it needs to be, this is what it's gonna be. I like it. Like that. And I asked you that because I've seen uh, interviews with other great artists who have told the same story about how they've been around their, their brain trust trying to select a single and the, the 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 popular vote is for a song that they they just don't even like like that they not i wanted this to be the single but everybody's saying this should be the single they trusted the majority and the song blew up so it could go it could go either way man it could go either way man you know so fast it's in the building go ahead bro i was gonna say those 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 kind of like think tanks like you know, they, they know what's, what this, what is going to be like they, but I feel like once you get to that level, whatever you pick for the single might be, you know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? It's just, they want the most commercial one, right. but I think the artists might want to tell a different story. Like they, they might want you to hear this because it's their favorite song. Uh, exactly. and it being the best song for the commercial, you know, the commercial output. Yeah. But yeah. Where do you see yourself, um, your growth as an artist? How do you see yourself growing? I, I I don't even have to ask if you are trying to ascend to the level of a, of a businessman as well, because I'm sure you are. But um, what is your ultimate vision for yourself for the whole totality of your of your career? What do you what do you want that to encompass? Um, I I think you know I I, I do think my sound and, and and things that I'm capable of have the ability to be. On a, on a global scale, you know, yeah. I think we're, we're tapping into so many lanes and so many different uh, genres 
And, you know, I think that we have the ability to get global, you know, to get to that, that point where it's like, okay, that's house. I would, I wouldn't say household name, but household name, you know, yeah. to that. And, and at the end of the day, like the success is only to be, to fund our other projects, you know, like this, I want a studios, I want studios, I want um, creative, you know, visual studios, maybe a clothing line, brands, things like that. It's, it's to create the wealth, the wealth inside of my, my family, my name. So that's the, that's the whole major goal. Even if we don't get to that global level, me personally in my household name, the things that I create off of my success, whatever level it may be, will be household names. That's the point of it. Man, beautiful, man. Well, man, well, I, I thank you so much for coming on my platform. When, when, you, when you blow up, don't forget about your big brother. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I want I want that interview, too, when you when you get big, man. You know, so I thank you, man. Give, give us any social media, any contacts, booking information, whatever you want to lay it out, and I'll put the links in the, in the description. Man, follow. Uh, go ahead and give me a follow on Instagram at the real underscore Sev, S-E-V, um, on Facebook at Sebastian. If you guys want to have any questions about booking information or anything like that, you can hit up Mo Hustle um, on all of his platforms, or you can text the number 281-830-5540. Um, but once again, y'all go check me out on YouTube, Sebastian Music, on Instagram at the real underscore S-E-V, Seb. Um, and man, I appreciate you for, for bringing me on the show and I ain't never going to forget this, man. This is anytime. Man. Do, do you have any projects out right now that the people can go and get or any music they can get off the, um, the digital platforms? Yeah, everything is on the digital platforms. Uh, so I'm Sebastian with a V S E V A S T I N on Spotify, Apple music, um, you know, Amazon, any, any platform. We, we got a couple, a couple of the singles out, um, the one with Cap G, Sava the the remix, Phobos remix with Paul Wall. And we're dropping an album. It's called Just the Beginning. Um, and that's going to have all, all, all my latest stuff on it. And that's going to be just, this is just the beginning, man, because we're going to the top. So that's coming soon. We're going to have CDs, merch, all of that coming soon, man. Y'all go tap in. Thank you, man. Well, I totally agree. I believe this is just the beginning for you, brother. Much success to you, man. And, and stay like you are and keep on and keep your foot on their neck. Keep your foot on that gas, man. And um, y'all here, man. Sebastian in the building. Y'all will be seeing and hearing from this brother a lot real soon, in my humble opinion. It's your big brother, K Reno. Much love to y'all. Catch y'all on the next one. Peace and love. Thank you, family.